All right, now we're going to go into section 5.2, which is going to be talking about how to find these theoretical probabilities. So just use in math. So first, note that probabilities can be expressed as a fraction, a decimal, or a percentage. Okay. So for example, if we want to know the probability that we toss a fair coin, it comes up tails, we could either write it as 1 and 2, 0 0.5, or 50%. All of those are great. So what does it mean for an event to have a probability of 0? And what does it mean for an event to have a probability of 1? Well, a probability of 0 means it's never going to happen. Okay, so if something has a 0% probability, that means it's never going to happen. So for example, what's the probability that the sun doesn't rise tomorrow? It's a probability of 0. Now, if we have a probability and it equals 1, that means it must happen. So, what's the probability that the sun will rise tomorrow? Well, that's 100%. It's definitely going to do that. Now, can a probability be less than 0 or greater than 1? The answer is no. So if you ever get a probability that's negative or a probability that's bigger than 1, that means that something's gone wrong and you need to go back and fix your answer. Now when we write probabilities, there's a certain notation we use. Um, it's hard to write out every single time, like the probability of rolling a die and seeing a 5 is this. The probability of rolling a die and seeing a 7 is this. Okay, so instead what we write is p of the event equals, and then we write the probability. So, for example, if we want to write down the probability that we roll a six-sided die and we roll a two, we would write the probability of getting a two equals one in six. Now this notation only makes sense if you have a context above, but it does help us out, especially if we're asking multiple questions um, using the same context. Now, the next question is, what is the probability that we roll a 4 or we do not roll a 4? So when we do an OR statement in mathematics, we're putting these two situations together. So if we roll a 4, we're happy. That's an outcome we want. If we don't roll a 4, well, we're still happy. That's still an outcome that we want. So the probability that we roll a 4 or not a 4, well, if I roll a 4, or if I don't roll a 4, that kind of covers every possibility. So that's going to give me a probability of 1, or 100%. When we say the probability that something happens, or something does not occur, what we call that is we call that the complement. And we usually denote it by A to the C for complement. Another way you might see this, in a different textbook or a different example, is sometimes I'll write a tilde, that means not. So if you take the probability that something happens, plus the probability it doesn't happen, well, you've covered all your bases. It's either going to happen or it's not going to happen. So when you add those together, it equals 1. This is helpful because sometimes to find a probability, it's easier to write down 1 minus probability it doesn't happen. So for example, by the way, you guys probably do this all the time and you don't even know it. So for example, if we use the complement to find the probability that we don't pull a 4 out of a deck of cards, well the probability that we pull a f or we pull a not 4 out of a deck of cards is going to be 1 minus probability that we do pull a 4 out of a deck of cards, which would be 1 minus 4 out of 52, which would give us 48 out of 52, which is 12 out of 13. A more realistic example of when we would do this would be, well, if the probability it's going to rain today is 22.5%, what's the probability it doesn't rain? Well, the probability that it doesn't rain, so the complement, which you could also write as doesn't rain, is going to be 1 minus the probability that it does rain, which would be 1 minus 0 0.225, okay, which would give us 77.5% chance that it will not rain. 
Alright, next up what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to find these theoretical probabilities with equally likely outcomes. Okay, So, <clears throat> when we talk about equally likely outcomes, we're going to be talking about things that have the same chance of happening. So think of a dice, like every side of a dice has a 1 in 6 chance of showing, each side of a coin has an equal 50-50 chance of showing, a deck of cards, etc. Okay, so we're not thinking of anything that's necessarily weighted. So first off, a sample space is a list that contains all possible outcomes. An event is any collection of outcomes in that sample space, and an event is not the same as an outcome. Okay, so let's look at an example. So let's say that we flip three coins simultaneously, and we want to write out that sample space. Okay, so First off, when we're doing this, um, there's a couple of different ways that you can write out the sample space. I like to use a tree. So first off, if we flip one coin, we can either get heads or tails. Now if we get heads on the first coin, that has two options of what we can get after. We can either get heads or tails. If we flip tails first, we can either then get heads or tails. After that, for the third coin, we can either get heads or tails, heads or tails heads or tails, heads or tails. So what we do now is that we're going to follow each branch of the tree and that will give us one outcome. So the first coin could be heads, heads, and heads. So that would give us heads, heads, heads for our three coins. Then we follow it to the other branch. I'll do that in a slightly different color. So we follow it to another branch and that's going to give us another possibility. So we could have gotten, whoops, heads, heads, tails. So if we follow all of these branches down to their leaves or down to their endpoints, then we're going to get all the possible outcomes. So tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, 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 heads, tails, tails, tails. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great, so we have eight total possible outcomes. Great, just like the hint said we should have. Now we want to circle the event where we have two or more heads. We flip and we have more than two heads. So that should actually say two or more heads. So let's see. I have three heads here. I have two heads here. Two heads here. That doesn't count. Two heads here. And that's it. So. Let's see, the probability that I get two heads or more is going to be, well, I have eight possibilities total. And out of that, I see my event one, two, three, four times. So I have a one in two shot of getting two or more heads. So when you're finding the probability that you get or if you're trying to find the probability of something and each thing has equally likely outcomes, what you're going to do is you're going to take the number of ways that outcome can occur or the times you see the event and divide it by the total number of outcomes or you can also think of that as the size of your sample space. All right, we're going to stop that here and we're going to pick it up. Um, on the next video since this one's already about 15 minutes long. So I will see you guys in just a second.